Cool. So, uh, yeah, this talk is what is Gitflow. Um, I was going to try to think of a better title, but couldn't. So, what is Gitflow? Um, so, a little bit about me. Um, my name is Oliver Davis. Um, I'm a developer and an assist admin. Um, I'm OP Davis on Twitter, on D.O. and on IRC, pretty much everywhere. Fortunately, just Oliver was taken, so to be a little bit more imaginative. Um, you can get to my D.O. profile, you can use um, dgo.2 at OP Davis, will get you to my uh, profile page. Um, been doing Drupal and PHP since 2007. Um, my background is primarily in IT support and, and hardware repair and that type of thing. Um, started doing, doing Drupal and, and website stuff on the side back in 2007 and full time since 2010. Um, been a Git user since 2010 also. Uh, my first job was, was um, Git based version control. Um, and being a Git flow user for, for about a year. So. I was using the same sort of branching structure and, and model beforehand, but was doing it all manually. Um, whereas Git obviously gives a lot of the, the automated tools for it. Um, president, so I currently work for President. We are uh, uh, an agency primarily based in London. Um, we'll offer it also in Cardiff, uh, where I am, Edinburgh, um, two in Australia and one in Hong Kong. So. Um, I've been here just about a year, and we moved to Git just before I joined, I believe. Um, I was sort of championed the Git flow branching models when I joined, uh, and sort of become our standard for all of our current and ongoing Drupal projects. Um, yes. So, yeah, Git flow is, this is um, the quote from, uh, from, from the GitHub repository. Um, a collection of Git extensions to provide high-level repository operations for Vincent Dreisen's branching model, which is great. Um, yeah, basically what it does, it adds um, some wrapper functions around already existing Git functionality. So it doesn't offer add any any new anything new in terms of functionality. It's basically putting wrappers around what's already already there. Um, because of that, it's not compulsory for everybody in the team to use Gitflow. Um, it's easier if, it, if that is the case, um, but if you get one guy who doesn't want to use Gitflow, wants to do all this branching and merging and rebasing manually, that's fine also. Um, this is the diagram that's referenced in, in that blog post. Um, so basically what we're looking at is a, a multi-branch um, structure. Um, so primarily separating uh, your production code from your development code um, by not keeping everything on the master branch. So we've got um, develop, main development branch, feature branching, release branches, and hot fixes. Um, the main point is this encourages feature-driven development. So rather than having everything on, on, say, on one branch, we work on a number of sub-branches and, and do um, merging and rebasing back into to, uh, various other branches. Um, that's releasing and tagging of code. So everything in your master branch um, is tagged um, in Git anyway. So if you're updating your site in a production environment or a live server, uh, you base it off the tag. Um, you've also got um, off the rollback to a tag um, if you so wish. Um, we're primarily working in an agile development environment. So at the end of each two week sprint, I just go through Git flow release. So I've, I've got a, a bi weekly. Um, snapshot of the code uh, at that point. Um, multiple, multiple opportunities for QA and, co and code review and for review. So it also gives release branches which are then pushed onto um, QA servers which our QA team um, are then testing. Um, so yes, the branches we're using. So master branch is, is for your production code. Um, so it's the tag at the end of, end of each release. So master is your stable, stable production code. Um, develop is, is your development code. Um, so this should also be fairly stable. Um, everything in develop can become live very quickly um, by going through a release cycle. 
which I'll mention in, in a moment. Um, feature branching is sort of the main, main thing. Um, so I tend to work on a feature branch per um, ticket or, or user story, I think, as we're doing agile development. Um, yep, yeah, sort of feature branch per, uh, per story. Um, release branches are temporary uh, release branches for testing. Um, so when you do a release, it creates a, a release branch, which you can then push, uh, have the QA guys testing, and uh, once then you finish your release, it goes back into, into your master branch again. Um, Hotfixes is uh, the other great thing. So uh, temporary branch for emergency fixing. So I'll cover that basically branches from your, from your production code <coughs> rather than from your, from your development code. Um, I'll cover all these in a little bit more detail in a moment. Um, there is also a, a typo, um, a support branch, um, which is still experimental. So uh, I'm guessing it's quite similar to hot fixing. Um, but yeah, it's recommended you don't use it in a production in, in an environment. Um, if you try using Gitflow um, support, um, it does flag and say this is experimental, not to be used in production. Um, so yeah, why use Gitflow? Uh, so as I said, it separates your production and your development code, so you've got um, no chance of pushing um, code that's not production ready in, into the uh, live environment. Um, flexibility, so because we've got multiple branches, it's quite quick to pick up and drop different features. Um, if I need to work on a different story today, all my code is, is contained within its own feature branch, so I can quickly switch between, uh, between branches. Um, Better code, code quality. Um, I think because we're working on specific features, these are then tested by um, peer code review and QA team um, in sort of isolation rather than testing the whole project as, as, as a whole. Um, it encourages collaboration within the team um, because we're working on standard um, branch names and it's quite easy to push and pull um, feature branches into um, a remote uh, repository. And uh, yeah, encourages, encourages peer code reviews. So my role is a git, git flow. Um, never ever commit code directly onto master. So master branch is purely used for uh, production code. Um, we're using the Atlassian stacks, we're using Stash. Um, it's the same if you're using GitHub or if you're using Bitbucket, you can change your default branch. So I always change the default branch to be developed so that anybody cloning out the repository will all get the development code rather than the master code. Um, yeah, only commit stable code to develop. So if you go through a release cycle, anything on the, on the develop branch becomes master branch and therefore production code very quickly. So if you've got code that's unstable, unfinished, um, then yeah, don't put it on the develop branch. Um, that's what feature branches are for. Um, try not to commit directly onto develop. Um, you can commit directly onto develop, so maybe if you're just downloading admin menu module or something, um, then yet yeah, Vome is committed onto develop. Um, but ideally, use um, feature branches as much as possible. Um, one feature branch per user story or bug. So I tend to go down the route of um, using uh, issue numbers in my feature branch names. So if I'm working on a feature, uh, issue ticket, one, two, three. Um, I always start on one, two, three, dash, um, foo or, or something. Um, this one isn't Git flow specific, but I always say commit early, commit often, push often. So it's much easier to have a lot of smaller commits. Uh, if you need to revert a commit back, it's much easier to do with a much smaller commit um, and also push often. Um, two reasons for that, mainly being with Git, obviously being a, a distributed version control system. Uh, it's good to have a backup on a, on a remote server somewhere, but also it's there for everybody else to see and, and collaborate, collaborate on. So how do we use Gitflow? So I tend to use the command line. The command line is your friend. Um, if you use a Mac, you can use Homebrew and do brew install Gitflow. If you're using uh, Ubuntu or Debian-based systems, you can use apt-get install Gitflow, git hyphen flow, sorry. Um, and if you're using something um, Red Hat or CentOS-based or with, with the YUM package manager, you can YUM install Gitflow. Um, there's no hyphen on the YUM, uh, YUM package name. Um, 
if you're using Windows or you're not very command line friendly, I recommend you download Source Tree. Um, it's written by and re released by Atlassian. Um, it's got Git Flow integration built in. Uh, it's free, it's cross platform, so it works for um, Mac, Linux, uh, Windows machines. Um, I tend to use it as well, just if I need to have a very quick overview of, of a project. Um, if you need help at any point, you can run Git Flow Help. It gives you the uh, standard help menu. Or if you, you can also use Git Flow Subcommand Help. So if you have need help on something to do with feature branching, Git Flow Feature Help or Git Flow Release Help, etc. <coughs> so, initializing Git Flow. Um, it's very easy to do. Git Flow in it. Um, same as running Git in it, really. Um, it can be to any point. So it can either be an, a new, completely empty, clean repository. It could be a repository that's already existing and with commits. It doesn't have to be a, a, a new uh, repository. Um, create your default branches. So once you've done git flow in it, uh, you get this message that says no branches exist, assuming uh, it's, it's uh, clean, um, and prompts you to create your, uh, your two main branches. So master for production and develop for next release. Uh, from there, you then prompts you to configure your branch prefixes. So feature slash, release slash, hotfix slash, support slash. Um, you can also put a version tag prefix. So I've never used it, but um, I tend to do feature branching by um, date, date stamp. So uh, I guess if you were to go down the semantic versioning route, you could sort of prefix it with a letter V or, or something, but yeah, I've, I've never used it. Um, what I tend to do is I never change them. So you, it prompts you to use master and develop, but you don't have to use master and develop. You could call them whatever you want. Um, I always tend to use the uh, default branch names. Um, so git flow init minus D um, automatically accepts all the default branch names rather than getting it and then pressing enter five or six times. Uh, features. So, git flow feature is uh, the main command. Um, so, list lists all your current feature branches. Um, checkout checks out an existing feature. Um, this can either be the full name of the branch, or it could be 123 foo, or it could just be 123. You can actually um, go by prefix names as well, so you don't have to do it the full name. Um, git flow feature starts, starts a new feature, uh, finish, finishes a feature. Publish pushes it into remote repository, so stash, GitHub, um, Bitbucket, uh, and pull, also, yeah, pulls. So feature branches, um, probably based off, uh, off the development branch, but I'll show you that in a second. So um, git flow feature start name. Um, so in this case, I've, I've used foo. Um, so switch creates a new, makes a new branch um, based on develop, so it's based on your development code, uh, and automatically switches you to that branch. Um, you don't need to be on develop branch to start this. You can run it if you're on master or anywhere. It'll automatically uh, branch develop and move you on to, uh, to, to your new branch. Um, you start committing your, your um, commits. You put all your, your features in there, and then you run git flow feature finish through um, at the end. So um, in this case, I'm down the admin menu module. Um, use the normal git add command and git commit. Um, with a message added out in the menu. A very simple feature. Um, what I normally suggest is you rebase at this point. So if you're maybe working on a, on a particularly large um, feature, um, obviously in, in this case that wouldn't really apply, but if you're working on a feature maybe from the beginning to the end of the sprint, possibly the develop branch has moved on since you did your original uh, branching. Um, and what um, the rebase will do is rewind your changes um, reapply, um, develop onto your feature branch, and reapply your feature branch changes um, afterwards, um, just so that you don't try and do the finish and then have conflicts. It's easier to fix them um, at this point. Um, and then git flow finish feature. So git flow finish feature foo, um, switches you back onto the develop, um, fast forwards your uh, commits, puts all your commit messages in there. Um, in this case, 31 files changes, 5,051 assertions, deletes your feature branch, um, and then little summary, little summary. So merges it back into your develop, develop branch, 
um, delete it and put you back onto develop again. And you repeat the process. So you may be working on X number of development uh, feature branches per sprint. Um, you can have multiple feature branches going on at any one given time. So you can quickly uh, start new feature branches. And, and yeah, you just keep building, building features. Um, get flow release. Um, so you've got your sprint. You've started your sprint. You've committed all your features. You now want to do um, a, a release. Um, so yeah, as I say, I do this at the end of each sort of sprint. So I've got a, a bi-weekly um, snapshot um, of what we do. So um, get flow release list, list existing releases. I think they can have only one active release branch at a time. I think if you try and do another one, it will uh, tell you you've already got an existing um, release branch. Um, get flow release start, starts a new release, and finish, finishes a release. So fairly, uh, fairly standard there. So get flow release start, you pass it a version number. I tend to go by this sort of date-based approach. So I tend to go um, year-month-day dot zero. Um, so dot zero is my first sort of release for that day. And then if I need to do subsequent things, I've got zero, one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. Um, so creates um, a new feature branch based on develop, uh, gives you opportunity to, to um, bump your version number, you commit any last minute fixes, and you run your git flow release finish um, at, at the end. So what I also tend to do is at this point do, um, we tend to keep a snapshot of the database at the end of each sprint also. Um, so this is the ideal point to, to do um, address SQL dump command, store a database file, um, add a command down to the repo and to the release branch, and um, that gets stored as, as part of the merge. Um, yeah, so yeah, finishing the release. I've said. So yeah, delete your temporary release branch, because these are only, only temporary branches. Um, fetches them, it does a pull from origin to make sure your code's up to date. Merges it back into master, so into your production branch. Um, tags it with um, the tag that you've specified, and then also back merges it back into develop. So when you next start a feature branch, you've got your, uh, it's based on your latest version of, of your production code. And yeah, then it deletes your uh, release branch. Um, there are advanced options for this. So if you're using um, release tag signing, if you're using PGP or, or GPG keys um, for sort of authentication, you can pass that as a, as a parameter. Um, the wiki on the GitHub repository, there's a, a command line arguments page um, which covers a lot, of, uh, a lot of these. I'll link to that at the end. Um, pushing changes remotely, this is just normal Git. Um, git push dash dash all pushes all your uh, updated branches and git push dash dash tags pushes the tags because we've also got a new master, a new developer branch uh, and also um, a new, new tag. Um, as I said, there's a number of, uh, of commands that we can use. Um, so I tend to use um, dash p for push and dash m for message. So rather than being prompted again to declare a tag number, uh, a tag or, or a version, um, I do it all on, on the command line here. So it's normally the message and the version are the same, um, so I, I tend to do it. But it saves, saves some, some typing. Um, so yeah, that, that's sort of, uh, the example I would normally use if I was doing a, a, a release today. Um, finish sprint.sh, this is a little shell script I've put together um, a little while ago. So this is, rather than me going through and uh, doing all these things manually, I'm, uh, I've got a shell script which is, uh, which is doing certain things for me. So um, I tend to run finish sprint.sh um, with um, the tag number, um, give it the path to uh, the Drupal directory. Um, if there's not a tag, you have to specify a tag. Um, goes into your Drupal directory, runs the release start for you with the tag number. Um, dash F will do a fetch, it'll pull from the remote origin branch um, before, uh, before anything else. Um, flush easy cache in Drupal does um, a SQL dump, so like I say, we tend to do um, a database snapshot at the end of each sprint also. Um, so this command is doing, is doing that. So it's S, uh, drush SQL dash dump, um, pass it a gzip flag, so it uh, gzip compresses it. Um, and also a dash dash release file, otherwise it outputs it to the screen. Um, it goes in, 
we're running this from within um, the dock root folder, but I've also got a DB folder, and it's using the tag number again to uh, make the file name with .sql. Um, adds it in, runs the commit, um, exports a database for date again, and also runs git flow release finish pm tag tag. So one, one command rather than uh, five or six, I guess. Um, hot fixing. So hot fixes, hot, hot fixes are um, emergency fixes. So you've gone th through a release, you've launched your code possibly into production, you've realized that you've got a typo or you've got something that you need to, to fix. Um, the difference with the hotfix is it will branch from the master branch rather from the developer branch, so it branches from your, um, from your production, production code. So the commands are pretty much the same, so give the hotfix list, start and, and finish. So, um, create, so create a new hotfix, um, very similar, git for hotfix start, so we tend to use the same date format for this. Um, so in this case I might be running um, 2014.-3-2.2, second uh, release for the day. Um, and this is what it's showing is it's uh, branching, creating a new hotfix branch based on master rather than develop. So it's branching your production code. Uh, switches you onto your, hot, onto your temporary hotfix branch. Again, here you uh, bump the version number if you're using semantic versioning. Um, you commit your hotfixes. And again, the, the command's very similar, git flow hotfix finish, and give it your, ty your uh, version in that. Yeah, so maybe in this case we've forgot to put in the uh, www redirects or something in HG access file. So uh, in, that in this case, I've added those in, committed those onto the, onto the um, hotfix branch with the commit ID. And, um, yeah and then run the, uh, finish the hotfix. So git flow, hotfix, finish, um, take time. So switches to master, merges your code back into the master branch, um, switches onto develop, also merges it back into development branch. So hotfixes, again, also apply to master and merges back into the developer branch. So the next time you have to start a new feature, your hotfix is included in your next feature. Um, so yeah, there's a poll. Merge into master, um, tags it again at this point, so you'd have another tag um, following your, uh, your hotfix, and again, yeah, merges, back, merges it back into, into the master branch. Um, some resources, so the top one is, is the original um, blog post that introduces the whole sort of branching structure and model. Uh, why using git flow is, is a good article to read. Um, this git flow cheat sheet is a very nice um, thing. I'll, I'll show you now. I'll put these slides online after not everything is orange is, is clickable. So um, it's, it's over here. So this is the git flow cheat sheet. So it's a very nice um, visual thing of how it all sort of fits together. It's got some installation instructions um, at the top, and it's a very nice sort of thing of how it shows how it all uh, branches and merges together. And also, source tree is quite good for this. Also, um, this is the actual GitHub um, repository where it's all, it's all stored. It's all open source on GitHub, um, and I just put a link here to the slash wiki page. Um, up until quite re quite recently, um, I was planning on forking it and putting a lot more uh, documentation in for a lot of the command line switches. So that there's features like Git flow feature rebase, which aren't really covered in Git flow help but then found this wiki page on the, on the repository which covers quite a lot of it. Um, yeah, I was going to, I might do, a, we've got a bit of time left I think, so um, I can do questions and I can maybe do a demo if you've got a time left at the end or we've just got a bit of time. Have you got any, uh, any questions? Yep. Sorry, I, I missed it, but um, before you do the, this kind of workflow is, is just on a, like a local repository rather than the remote? Yeah, it's all done, yeah, oh, same, right. same as Git, normally it's all done locally until the point that you, you do the push. Um, so yeah, ideally you have your, your obviously your master and developer branches remotely, but normally uh, your feature branches remain, or can remain local, 
yeah. your release branch is going to remain local, although you can <coughs> then use GitFlow feature publish and release publish to push them into remote. So you could get, if you tie it within, within like a Jenkins CI environment, mm -hmm. you can then run those types of things on, uh, on release branches or if you may be working in a, what I'm doing at the moment is working with a team of sort of three of us, mm -hmm. um, is pushing feature branches. So I'll do some back end work and then push the feature branch. Another guy then will pull it down, do some front end work on it, and then we run through the, um, the, the feature. Um, one thing, yeah, one thing I was going to mention as well is that we're using this with, with Stash, and it's the same, I think, with using GitHub or, or Bitbucket. Um, talking about peer code review. So what we're doing at the moment is um, myself, I've got rights to push and pull anywhere within the repository. Then some of the other developers on a project can only push and pull to um, feature branches. So what, what we're doing there is encouraging code review so that they can only commit to feature branches, push the feature branch into Stash, and then create pull requests within Stash. Um, same as if you're using GitHub or something. Uh, but then it's up to me then to then do a, gives, it gives you a nice sort of graphical interface for, a, for, the, uh, for the diff. And it's up to me then to do the um, re review at that point, push any changes back, and, uh, and do the release and, and do the push. So we find that works very well at the moment as well. Maybe a naive, uh, bit of a novice question. I, I recently started using Git. Um, I'm using it for, uh, well, it used to be PHP, HTML, CSS. Um, I also like to roll back things in my database occasionally. Um, okay. It's actually similar to Git that you can use on your SQL file or your database, basically. Because the only thing I can do is many backups and put that back there. Mm. Yeah, I think I was. What I've been doing a little bit is it's the, it's the end of each sprint is running Drush SQL dump. So it actually exports the database into a, um, a .sql.gzip file. Uh, and those are stored within Git. So I've sort of got a DB folder. And then in the end of each release, there's a date stamped database version. So if I need to roll back to a previous snapshot, um, people can then check out that release code and also have the database that they can re-import also. No, nothing, nothing I know for doing that. On that note, with your database, this is all in your development environment. The end of your back in the database up, all yep. the production. When you pull down your code, mm -hmm. you release it. Yeah. What happens if, if, if you break the database at that point? Um, well, the database is mainly there for, for backup and for, for development yeah. purposes, really. Um, yeah, you shouldn't be importing databases back into production. So, um, no, no, well, that's what I mean. So when you, when you pull your code in, into production, if you're backing up the database before you do that as well? Um, yeah, obviously that's, we'd, we'd probably do that with something like Jenkins or something anyway. So what I tend to use is your production database is the same and we pull that back into sort of QA, UAT, dev, local. Um, rather than pushing it back the other way. Um, <laughs> so um, it tends to go down a very code-based development route, so everything is stored in features um, and exportables as much as we can. So everything is, is pushed in that direction from uh, local dev, um, QA, UAT, prod, um, in code as, as much as possible, obviously. So we try not to touch the database at all. It's mainly there for if somebody else comes into a project, there's a, um, a starting point for them to, to import, I guess. It's just a point of reference. Yeah. Um, if you have a staging server, um, I, I'm using something I'm pretty much using Git for my development. But um, if you're using a staging server and you want that to, you want to test feature code from a feature branch on that, do you then have to go on the staging server and just check out a different branch? We would, we would try and have a staging branch that automatically just deploys that, but that, that kind of gets a bit messy. Sure. So, um, yeah, it's a good question. So we tend to use um, Develop Branch mainly for development. So if you've got a, a, like a UAT site or something, it tends to mainly be run off, um, off the Develop Branch, off the latest commit. Um, in terms of feature branching, there is, a, I guess, a chance to make individual sort of versions of a site based off a feature branch. Um, I've seen setups where many of these are like Jenkins CI. Um, it's then automatically building virtual hosts and databases and things based off feature branches. Um, so yeah, there have been occasions where I've had to make probably a, a, um, a feature-specific version of a site um, just to demonstrate something in particular. Um, part of that is, the, is down to the way I tend to sort of set up the URL path. So 
tend to have them sort of um, dev dot client dot server. So if we did need to set up a, a feature one two three branch, the, the DNS is already set up to do that. Um, so that takes a little little bit of the pain out of it. But yeah. Any other questions? I, was, I went through that quite quick. <laughs> So, yeah, I was going to put the uh, the slides up here if you want to check them out. Um, there is actually a session evaluation link that I found on the <laughs> Drupal camp. Um, I've not really seen them mentioned too much yet. Um, sure. Um, so I've got a little bit of time, so I can. Do we want to see a quick demo of it in action, or? Cool. Let's hope this doesn't die. Hope you have a terminal on a presentation is never a good idea. I can get it onto the screen. That would be a good start. So empty branch. So is that even mean to cutting off the end of my terminal? There we go. So git um, git flow in it. So yep, initialize empty git repository. No branches exist. So master develop feature release hotfix support version. Normally I just say I'd use dash D for that. Um, so we're on the develop, development branch as we can see. So if we were to do um, something like, let's just do a drush down. So we go down the drush, um, down the Drupal. Wi-Fi. Uh, should have done something smaller. There we go. So I'm going to move that into um, a telecom. You have like a dot root directory. And um, so yep, so on, on the development branch. Um, so what I'll tend to do here is just do a quick, um, quick release at this point. Just so we've got something already in the master branch. Um, Fourteen. It's March, nice little key plug in 13.02.0. Um, so you could, I say you could also use version 1.2 or something. Yep, stuff is not committed. So I'm using um, open, um, ZSH terminal, using um, oh, oh my ZSH, which is putting uh, this release dash branch name in there. We'll also put in a little cross, so if you've got stuff that's not committed, um, it'll uh, put it in there. So I can run git status, so I can run uh, add doc root, um, git commit, um, added Drupal. Yeah, it'll be a bit more imaginative with your commit messages. Um, git flow release finish 14. Um, so yeah, it's probably it's, I'm using uh, Vim for doing all my branches, so I can just that's fine. Quit that, and this is now prompting me to enter a tag, um, a tag or a version number. So I'll use the same same thing to and save it. And again, this is why I like doing it in one line. So at this point, we're now back on the development branch. Everything has been um, committed. What I can do, so I do have source trait. 
I'm going to open up this and you can see what it looks like. So we can see over here, this is where we've got the initial commit. It's then branching off into a, into a release, which is yellow, um, and then merge back into, into develop again. Here. So back in the development branch already. Um, we can run git flow um, feature start. And so it might be issue one, two, three. And um, this is what we'll be working on admin menu module. Or, something. This is quite standard for um, git branching to do a, use like an issue number, if you're using like a, a Drupal um, issue or something, you could put that there. Um, download um, menu. Excuse me. So it's obviously downloading admin menu module. So it's downloaded. Um, git add or git commit um, added admin menu module um, and then git flow feature uh, finish and yep so I can either put in one two three dash admin menu do the full thing or um, you can just put in one two three and it will look for, for prefixing um, feature brand. Sorry. 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 So you you start a, a new feature. Yep. This admin menu one. Mm -hmm. And then you think, oh, I need to do something. Build another feature. Yep. Do you have to finish this one? The, um, um, how would you start the two features concurrently? Um, well, you commit any changes onto that feature branch. Yeah. Uh, and then you can just run Git for feature start again, oh, and it'll, okay. it'll branch. So. Um, there's, there's no limit to number of feature branches you can have at any given time. So. And to go back to the um, uh, yeah, so you can do git flow um, uh, feature. So do, so I got that right. So yeah, we've, these are the commands that you can use for, for git flow feature. So we've got start, finish, publish, track, diff, rebase, checkout, and pull. So if you were to check out uh, another feature, you could git flow feature checkout name or, or prefix. So um, yeah, there's no limit to the number of feature branches you can have at any one given time. So and that's what I alluded to earlier about flexibility, that if you need to f suddenly drop one, s one story or, or one bug, move on to a different one, you commit, you have a new feature branch, and it's all set up there. Um, cause yeah, there's, and then you can do sort of git branch minus A, and you can see, and you'd have feature dash something, you'd have them all um, list listed in there. Um, new version of source tree, not right now. Not a good time. Um, so yeah, and uh, develop branch has been um, merged back in again. So yeah, so this is where I'd normally update from uh, a, a dev site or a staging site for development branch. Um, so you do get this quite this sort of complicated looking sort of graph of everything going out and then back in again, but everything goes back onto to develop in the end. Um, git flow. Um, I'll do another one quickly. So git flow um, feature. Start maybe someone is two, three, four, and we're using I don't say module filter or something. Trash DL module filter. No. That's done. Status. Yeah, let's get add module filter and git commit message and then git for, so at the moment we've also got this additional feature brand, um, feature brand, which shows up using source tree it does group them quite nicely over on the left hand side so all your feature branches are stored over here and you can see it there also same as true for pop fixes and releases well there's only one of those um, git flow feature finish two, three, four. Back in development branch again. Um, if it would uh, date. There we go. 
and get so I can must just do another quick release. Twenty fourteen two dot one on this occasion. So at this point I've got nothing else really to to um, to do at this point. No, actually that's So yeah, I'm midway through doing a release and realise that I have to actually set this thing up. Um, so let's just say we're having this in. So this is just demonstrating we can actually make commits to a release branch as well. It's not it doesn't have to be. Um, take that off from there also. Save. So yeah, so we're actually making a commit here right um, ST. Yeah, so we're actually making a commit commit now right onto the release branch. So if you did find a bug at this point, quickly uh, do it there. Git flow release finish and um, yeah. So if again, if I was going to push it, do uh, dash p would automatically push it for you. Um, actually, what I'll normally do is no, I don't want to do it. Um, feature. So yeah, what we normally do is do dash m here. So it actually does. It doesn't prompt me to put that in um, a second time. It will take the one I give it on a command line. Oh, three, oh. So there's a little bit of duplication, um, which is why I still get that one. But that's the only prompt I get now. So there's a little bit of duplication. But that's what the, that finish sprint um, script does. Um, so yeah, that's sort of basically. You to say you do get this sort of very sort of in and out base of graph where it's merging and branches and things. Um, that's <coughs> basically it and it's just a case of, uh, of just going and uh, repeat I guess. Any further questions at this point after the demo? <laughs> after the demo? No? Sorry I know I was that a bit fast. But